Today we're going to acquire a uh, synthetic aperture radar image using an ultra-wideband impulse radar. I've modified uh, this, this uh, X-band FMCW range gated radar to operate as an ultra-wideband impulse radar. Uh, I'll uh, do a little walkthrough of the equipment here. Let's see. Okay. So, here's a stack of gear to make this all happen. The very bottom is the, uh, it's a YIG oscillator set to 7.8 uh, gigahertz approximately. Uh, the two rack cases above that are not used. That power supply, that's the radar power supply control with the, two, with the four lights on it. Above that is another power supply. Above that is an IF, which is only used for power distribution. I have attenuators above that. Uh, they're not used in this case. Down here on the left is a microwave signal generator, which I use to uh, zero beat the receiver to determine what wavelength uh, the radar is on. Uh, to the right is a data acquisition computer. Uh, this is a uh, pulse generator used to synchronize the ultra wideband pulser and the sampling oscilloscope. Up here, we have uh, this interesting stack of equipment. So right there is a picosecond Pulse Labs 4015 uh, impulse uh, generator, uh, and hanging off it is a little microwave board that I made with my own uh, differentiator circuit. Uh, this is a uh, sampling oscilloscope HP model. I don't know 18 182C mainframe with a 1810A one gigahertz sampling plug-in. It has uh, more than one gigahertz of bandwidth actually. Uh, up here. As a a power supply, that it's a bench supply that simply powers um, this uh, this trigger board here. The trigger board takes the linear ramp output from this oscilloscope and provides a nice sharp trigger for the uh, National Instruments uh, Lab View, or rather, the National Instruments uh, Data Acquisition Card. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to zero beat the radar receiver, meaning uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a um, calibrated microwave signal generator to inject a signal into the receiver and watch the scope for the point at which the signal drops uh, to zero frequency offset from the LO. The purpose of this is to determine the frequency of the LO that we're injecting into the front end receiver mixer. Without that frequency, um, the, the radar imagery becomes defocused. So we need to, it's critical that we know that frequency. So we'll, uh, we'll begin by um, connecting this microwave signal generator with a digital readout here to a small uh, injection antenna right here. This is an old, um, electronic countermeasures antenna from an aircraft. It's good from 2 to 18. And it's actually a spiral antenna. Inside of this is a little spiral antenna. So this antenna will simply be placed in close proximity to the uh, receiver antenna, which is uh, this horn on the left here. Now if we, if we move the camera over here to the view of the scope, screen and I'll zoom into the oscilloscope screen here. Okay. Well, what I'll do is I'll adjust, right now it's, uh, we'll just adjust the frequency of the, the signal generator you can see it uh, going in and out of beat. So here we are a little low and here we are a little high. So we want to be at the minimum, right there. So again, a little low, a little high. And uh, the frequency of the LO is about 7.82 gigahertz. That, that is close enough to uh, form some imagery. So the first thing we're going to do is calibrate this thing, or attempt to calibrate it. 
the issue with ultra wideband impulse radar is that uh, you have very short pulse wide instantaneous bandwidth. That's good, but the problem is that um, the sensitivity is not always there because your average power tends to be very low, uh, requiring you to use high peak power uh, amplifiers, which in many cases, in this case in particular, you don't have. I think my um, power amp in this case is maybe quarter watt or 10 milliwatt, something on pretty small like that. So right there we've got a calibration pole located 5 feet 9 inches away from the radar. And um, this is clearly indicated on the screen here. I paused the program and the pole is the strongest return. So we'll use that as a cal target. And the first step will be to acquire a number of range uh, profiles and uh, then acquire a cal background. Okay, the next step is to place nothing out there and get a calibration background. So we'll uh, begin acquiring that right now. All right, now we've placed two uh, cylinder targets out here. And these are both distinct both in range and cross range. And uh, we will proceed to image uh, these cylinders and see what happens. Okay, now the radar is in place and the two targets are out there. I, I pushed them back a little bit further because I wanted the radar to have visibility at, into the targets at all locations down the rail. So the next step will be to uh, acquire this data set. So we're going to do uh, half inch increments 190 times down the rail. I'm going to start right now. All right, what's happening is the radar is moving half inch, uh, pinging the uh, target scene, recording, and then moving again. And you can see it slowly creeping across the rail. Here are the range profiles. That first large target um, is probably the, uh, the big cylinder within view right now of the radar. Let's back up so you can see this. So the front end is mounted on this extruded aluminum. And within that aluminum is a lead screw from a Genie garage door opener. In fact, the aluminum extrusion and lead screw are from a genie and then I mounted a, a stepper motor on the end. A friend of mine designed a transmission, that's what that little block of aluminum is hanging off the stepper motor. It's a, pulled out of a cordless drill. I'm using a gecko drive uh, to move this thing works pretty well. So we'll let that run. We'll see what happens next. Okay, the next step will acquire a background of nothing present as a reference and will apparently extract the background from the, the actual uh, measured data. I'll start the radar again. And off it goes. Now that we've acquired our data of the two large copper cylinders, let's see if the image uh, forms up. So I'll run the uh, MATLAB script, and we expect to see two uh, red blobs at the location of the two large copper cylinders. Again, one copper cylinder is 12 inch diameter, and the other is uh, 6 inches in diameter. Okay, here's the result. Very clearly shown are the two cylinders. So uh, this ultra wideband impulse synthetic aperture radar imaging system functions quite well. Um, next, we'll image uh, a group of lower RCS um, six-inch tall copper pipes uh, as a field of point targets to see how a slightly more complicated image turns out. Okay, so the next target seen is a group of six inch tall pieces of uh, half inch copper pipe. 
and uh, they're they're out here. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. In a block S configuration, and what I'll do is uh, see if I can image those. Uh, I should be able to, given the bandwidth of this radar system, and I have seen them on the range profile display, so we'll give this a try, see what happens. Okay, the radar is now running, and I'm a little bit hopeful because on the screen here, if it's at all visible, maybe not. On the very bottom there, I'm starting to see a number of point targets. So with any luck, this uh, data set will work out all right. Okay, so now let's look at the data from the uh, from the point target experiment where we placed uh, 11 small um, six inch copper pipes out uh, onto the styrofoam and we configured them in a block S pattern. So let's see how that looks. I'm running the script. And wait for the uh, processing. Okay, here we go. All right. So this doesn't look too bad. Interestingly enough, we can see pretty much every single one. We can count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, maybe yeah, I, nine. That one's a little um, blurry. Ten, eleven. So there they are in a block S pattern. Uh, small six-inch pipes uh, imaged with a impulse ultra-wideband X-band impulse radar system.